and welcome back to another Planet Zoo video. In this episode, we will be continuing along the career pathway and the next scenario, the Madagascan Simian Conservation Project. Oh, I love these statues, they're so cool. The Madagascan Simian Conservation Zoo is the culmination of Bernard Goodwin's work in the region, specialising in simian breed and release programmes, as well as championing and highlighting the diverse species of apes and monkeys. But never want to be complacent, Bernard now wants to see what you can do in this most promising of locations. Let's do it! Wow, this looks beautiful, whoa! Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? Indeed. <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just like England. The zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary where we're doing vitally important conservation work. Not just for apes, Zoa. but for all kinds of species. But oh, apes, they're so excited. Well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are. And yet, the way the world treats them is like, well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, no. that's why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. True. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in a right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> What do you think of Madagascar? My wife must be very it's hard on him. My taste, to be honest. Anyway, this is Bernie's primate sanctuary. It's not just primates, though. We've got all sorts of animals. So why don't we go and have a look at some of them, eh? We'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs. <gasps> They're the ones that look like they should be in a Shakespeare play. Red ruffed <laughs> lemurs. Come on, let's head over to them. Oh, that's so cool. So this is a rainforest zoo with lots of primates, but not just primates. Let's head over and have a look at the red ruffed lemurs then. Red ruffed lemurs are found in the rainforests of Masoala. That's in northeast Madagascar. Ooh. They can actually live anywhere from 15 up to 25 years. Fancy that, eh? Okay, when you're ready, let's go find our Bornean orangutans. Oh, okay, but I want to look at these guys. Oh my goodness, these look amazing! Look at that tail! Oh, he jumps! So what were we doing again? We were gonna find the orangutans, which would be over here. Hello! The Bornean orangutan is such a marvellous creature. Where are they? They're always a big favourite at any zoo they feature in. <gasps> and they're also the biggest tree-dwelling oh animal goodness. on the planet. Oh, it's a baby. Assuming you don't count any lions that got stuck up one. Oh, oh why don't you take a better look at them? Aren't they just incredible? Oh, that's so cute. When you're ready, let's go and have a look-see at some of our oh. beautiful bonobos. <laughs> they're quite the characters. <laughs> bonobos? What's a bonobo? The all-powerful ginger, what I aspire to be. <laughs> this is such a cool zoo! Holy moly! Oh dear! What? It looks like we've arrived just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. Oh no! And wouldn't what? you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. Uh -oh. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. But he's legging it! Select the habitat boundary to bring he's running. the habitat information <gasps> panel. He's escaping! Quick! Oh, what happens when he comes into... <gasps> They're legging it! And he's... <laughs> oh no! They haven't realised! Oh! Oh my god, he just took out a kid. Or five. Oh no! Okay, oops. What am I supposed to be doing? Let's pause this. <laughs> oh my god, everybody's leaving! Uh oh. So select the enclosure, go to the animals And click tab. on box all animals to box up the remaining bonobos. They're all here, so let's just box them all. Whoa! Now, we'll need a vet to recapture that escaped bonobo. But it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. Uh -oh. Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire a replacement, sharpish. Hire a vet. Now, click on one of the paths to place the vet in your zoo. Here we go. Right, Hello. now let's deal with our SKP before they can cause too much havoc. 
Use the animal alerts to jump to the escaped bonobo. Okay, animal alerts. Let's And then go over click here. on the call vet button to call the vet over to capture it. Call vet? Oh, here we go. Oh. Oh, okay, that's the relief. <laughs> so while the vet deals with our bonobo friend, let's go fix up their habitat so they can't escape again. Oh my goodness. Head back over there. Look oh. at him. He's loving life and living it to the fullest. Oh, just run over the bonobo. Yep. Where's this vet hat? Why are people running away? It's not like he can rip them to shreds. Okay, maybe a little dark. Um, <laughs> at least the vendors aren't really bothered. They couldn't care less. They're just like, huh? I have slushies to sell. <gasps> oh my god! Whoa, what happened? Okay. Well, it looks like the vet got him. And he is looking pretty darn happy with himself. Delete. There we go. Cool. And then replace Good. it. Oh. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb proof barriers to the top. <gasps> that way the bonobos won't be able to climb out. Just make sure you've got oh, the wow. correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so go into the options section and select which side the climb-proof barrier needs to go on. And don't get it wrong. Okay. We're more worried about bonobos climbing out than guests climbing in. Uh-huh, so right side? Oops, that's definitely the wrong side. Nicely Left. done. There we go. And I think it's high time we unbox those bonobos, wouldn't you say? Yes. The poor mites will get sad if we leave them in there for too long. Oh, no. I expect some of them are fair bursting for the toilet. Oh, bless them. So, oh, it turns him. out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. Oh, we'll need wonderful. to hire a couple of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. Right. You see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful things around the zoo, but one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. <laughs> Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble and fall down. And before you know it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Wow, okay, cool. Go into cool. the zoo section and then into the staff management area again. Boom. Perfect. Oh, gosh, we have been busy, haven't we? So now we Good have a vet there. and two I'm mechanics. Oh, I Perfect. think Bernie wants a word with you. Oh, Bernie wants a word with me. Oh, no. Oh, Hi. I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escape bonobo. Indeed. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. Well, thank and more you. importantly, without the animals stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. Um, could you that see, happen? Another key responsibility <laughs> for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment <gasps> items, additional information oh. for our education resources, <laughs> enhanced breeding programs, oh, and wow. improvements to food quality. You okay? <laughs> the animals' food, Seems not the vets. Chill. <laughs> It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. Uh -huh. Anyway, as you can see, research is a key part of running your zoo. Oh, what is this? Just an now, empty shack? You've probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research centre. Okay. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell. So oh. we're able to place our new building inside of it. Oh, perfect. If you select the research centre for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research centre to the existing building. Something tells me I have done this wrong. <laughs> right. Splendid work. Looks now that we have a brand spanking naff. new research centre, we can give our vet something to do in there. So, let's get our vet researching this ring tail. This doesn't rumors. exactly look great, Go into so I kind of want to change it. Let's vet research. Uh, how does one do that? Uh, what's this? Vet Here, research. You can see a list of all the animals present in your zoo, and also all the potential diseases that can occur. Oh, lovely. Now, Drag and drop your vet onto the ring-tailed lemur to start their research. So I get it. Okie dokie then. Let's view vet research. Drag this bloke onto the red roofed lemurs. Oh no, ring-tailed lemurs, I think. Actually, thinking about it, I'm not sure we've got any education boards or speakers by the lemurs' habitat. Oh. Let's head over there and add some so our guests can learn all about the furry little delights. Okie dokie then. So we need to head over to the animals. Where would they be? Ringtail lemurs is what I'm supposed to be saying. Hillary. Let's have a look at Hillary. Uh, in there. Perfect. Oh my goodness. Hi. 
Look how majestic they look. That's First really off, cute. let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or, if you like, pop them down on a stand. Okay, well, there's a stand here. Align to surface. Perfect. So this would go here, yeah? Perfect. Okay. Now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Okay. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. Right. And then ring-tailed lemurs. And from the drop-down list, select ring-tailed lemur. Perfect. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. Ring-tailed lemur. When you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. Right. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much. Okay. Fantastic. Perfect. Oh, it's worth remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. Right. They won't do much good without it. Makes sense. Ooh, it looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. Mm. We'll need to collect the results. Go on, collect your research rewards. Hey! Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. Oh, cool. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. Makes sense. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. Some animals like lemurs will have a climbing need. Okay. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space. Terrain. Ah, now, as you can see, the lemurs need quite a lot more climbing space. Yes. But as it happens, I've already got a climbing frame blueprint built for you. Oh. So you can either pop that down or build one yourself from scratch. Okay. By the way, it's not always just climbing needs that you have to worry about. Other animals might need a certain amount of water in their habitat so they can go for a swim. They certainly do keep us on our toes. Oh, indeed they do. So enrichment, climbing. Oh, I'll use this blueprint, I think. So I wonder where I can put it realistically. So if I place it like this, yeah, and then move it down, like so. Does oh, that work? That's a great climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely uh -oh. love it. Do you know what would make them even happier, uh -oh. though? nicer food but that's true of all of us though isn't it so that's looking pretty good i believe perfect so select the habitats there we go as you can see we can set the food quality in here just click on the drop down menu and select grade two food quality grade two food quality my mouth's already watering uh -huh. Grade two food so, quality. A new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. <gasps> now, I think it's oh time we God. looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities. It's amazing. Releasing animals into the wild. Right. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Hmm. Well, their age <gasps> is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. Makes sense. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidates will have a high fertility gene. And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Okay. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. And what's more, the animals you can adopt will be of a higher quality. That makes sense. So, with that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. Right, let's visit the orangutans. Luca. Okay, I'd like you to find Agang, the Bornean orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. Agang. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the habitat barrier, go to the animals tab in the habitat information panel, and find him in the animals list. Uh, this one, I believe. Oh, released into the wild. Lifespan remaining, four stars, fertility five stars, fertility gene five stars, and conservation status. Release. I know it's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild. True. And he's a wonderful candidate for release. Young, strong and fertile. Excellent work Aww. there. You've definitely got potential, you he's know. He's looking to see where his friend went. 
you're so tired. Ah, I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring-tailed lemur. I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more aldebra. <laughs> Tortoises. Hey, punny. Okay. So far, we've done a lot of work with habitat animals, but now it's time to learn all about exhibit animals. Let's build a brand new exhibit. Oh. I've marked an area for our new exhibit. How about we head over there? Okay, where are we building this then? Lovely. Now let's build a new exhibit in the gap that's been left. Oh. Just add it to the building like we did with the research centre earlier, then pop it into the gap. Okay, so facilities, small animal exhibits, and this one. There we go. Perfect. Ooh. The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. Okay. How about a Gila monster? Gila monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. <gasps> oh, do I have enough money? This animal is being adopted for cash. It cannot be released into the wild. Okay. Just as we do with habitat animals, we need to send the Gila monster to the exhibit. Okay. Click on the exhibit to send it there. Send to zoo and click. When you send an animal oh. to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. Oh. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready for them. Okay. So let's finish it off. We'll start oh, no. by adding some enrichment items. Right. Click on the exhibit to bring up its information panel. Yep. Good. Now click on the layout tab. Ooh. Oh. Well, it looks like we've only got the enrichment level 1 items unlocked at the moment. Never mind, let's turn on at least one of them for the healer monster. Okay, hiding place. As I'm sure you know by now, you can unlock more enrichment Did you just levels get by having one of your vets do some research. Now we'll also need to set the temperature and humidity in the exhibit. Oh. These are vitally important for keeping our healer monster happy and comfortable. Click on the climate tab. The climate tab? Here, you can see the healer monster's desired temperature and humidity. You can change both of these by adjusting the dials below. Make sure it's going to be nice and cosy. There we go. So this is what we need that set as. Let's see if this is good enough. It will take a little while though. That's the ticket. There we go. And the last thing we need to look at is setting up the different windows. So click on the windows oh. tab. Okay. You can edit and customize any of the windows on an exhibit. Right. A window can be closed and blank or have a two-dimensional background or hmm. even a three-dimensional background on it. Oh. Why don't you have a play around with the options? Okay, so window one. There's also an exhibit education board. Pop them down near your exhibits to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. Oh, I quite like that. Yes. Viewing boards. Let's get a exhibit education board. Place that there. Cool. Do I need to give them another one, do you think? Just like the there education boards and speakers we put down for the ring-tailed lemurs, you'll need to link these to the Gila monster. Go on. Okie dokie. Gila monster. There we go. Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Ooh. Right. Now, I've got a bit of a big job for you. Oh, dear. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. Wow. You'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Okay. Off you pop. I'll check in with you when you're almost done. Right, okay, so make new habitats and stuff. So how did we want to do that? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight, we need four more species. Interesting, so we have all of this space over here, so let's add something, shall we? Uh, Western chimpanzee. That seems interesting. So we could definitely do that. Let's think. Why don't we get this male and this female? So let's keep the path like this for now. Boundary requirements. We need climb proofing over five meters. Okay, let's do it then. It looks okay. It doesn't look great, but I don't mind. Could just have a gate like this. So if I go into animal storage and click on cheapo, I go send to zoo, put in here, and then I want to add climb proofing to the inside. Here we go. 
Okie dokie, a new animal, Chipo, has arrived at the zoo. Perfect. And the other one. There we go. Perfect. Let's have a think then. If I can just add a couple bits and bobs here and there, it might look okay. I don't know, this is coming along quite nicely. Oh, oops, I have added it to a tree. <laughs> what is this? Oh my god, no, this is insane. I'm just building a tower of elephant plants. Cool, cool. Not what I intended to do, but also not disappointed. So in terms of terrain, we needed more short grass. Let's have some shelter down here then. Seems good, seems good. They're happy with everything. Just bear in mind, I've only just started this game, so if... Why does this keep happening? I don't quite understand. There. Look, what happened? They both reset. I don't know if it's because I'm messing around in their enclosure or what, but... So we might as well get started on the tapir enclosure too. Oh, look! <laughs> oh my goodness. That is beautiful! So these guys have just used the water that's already there. That is clever. That looks good. That would be perfect for a tapir. So what I would need to do is extend this path this way, I believe. So what I want is for this to go round here. I probably shouldn't include these in the tapir enclosure, but I have a feeling it would not be a good idea. Okay. Awesome. Hard shelter. You need some shelter. What I could do is extend this path as well. Food and toy enrichment. So, enrichment. Let's go food. Forage. Let's add a foraging thing here. Let's just up it like this. Yeah, that seems okay, I reckon. Ha, <laughs> he's playing with the box. Look. Oh my god, that box is absolutely smashed up. Where are we going? Oops, that is a broken plant. <laughs> Delete that, okay. And then this one, we want to go animal exhibit. A lesser one of these. A goliath frog. Yes, adopt. Center zoo. Poke my, it in here. My, you have been oh my busy, goodness, that you? took a while. Splendid. But now that you've adopted all these lovely new species, we need to make sure they're nice and happy. So, let's get the average welfare across the zoo nice and high, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Go on, get to it! Oh, there's no power for this. Okay, we want power. So let's just put that there, and then what we need to do is get some paths and make them staff-only paths. But what we also want to do, add some bushes. And that is how you hide something, I hope. <laughs> now I want to get overall welfare to 90%, so the bonobos are not doing well. Why is that? Hard shelter and more toys. Gotcha. I've got you, fella. Don't you worry. I've got this. I've got this. Small ice ball enrichment. This looks cool. And a small ball as well. There we go. They look super happy. What is wrong with the barriers? Let's call a mechanic to fix the barriers. Does that look good? I would say yes, it looks perfect. Oh no, the hippopotamuses. Oops. Space is a problem. Social group is good. They have too little swimming stuff. Okay, so you just need some more water. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Lovely job there. Cool. You should be proud of yourself. Not only have you expanded the zoo and kept the animals as happy as Lanny, but you didn't bankrupt us in the process. Woo, Amazing. that's always a bonus. Happy, happy, happy. Most popular species is the Bornean orangutan. I made wow. money. Well, you certainly transformed the zoo. I barely recognize it. A wonderful new exhibit, some fascinating new species, and you've done wonders for the animals' welfare by enriching their habitats. <laughs> Who doesn't love playing with a three-foot wide soccer ball, huh? True. <laughs> I mean, other than professional soccer players. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't easy, though. I expect money was tighter than a possum's pouch. Hey. Plowing all those funds back into the welfare of the animals doesn't make running these places a picnic. Although, it does make me feel a little less guilty about how much our gift shops charge. <laughs> no, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason to run a zoo 
is to help animal kind. Sadly, it appears some other people have far less noble goals. What do you mean, far less noble? Oh, that is not good. Okay, apparently this mandrel is about to mature. Oh hey, look! It matured, that's awesome! I am happy, my zoo is happy, we have rain, it's beautiful. Is it a rainforest? Is it England? We will never know, but look at all those umbrellas. All of those umbrellas. People are just enjoying it. There are crowds, there are animals, there is happiness, there is footballs, there are buildings hidden away, water treatment plants, that sort of stuff. We have a vet facility that doesn't actually fit inside of the wooden thing. I'm not quite sure how to cover this up, but I will figure that out in the next video, most likely. <laughs> So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a big thumbs up. Comment down below which was your favorite animal from this video. Mine has probably got to be the orangutans. Not quite sure how this baby did that and clipped through the world, but hey, I'm not judging. Magical orangutan, I bow to you. What can I say? It's adorable, it's powerful. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Please remember to subscribe if you would like to see more of this series. It really means the world to me that we're growing as a nice little community, so thank you so much for getting involved, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much, take care, and bye-bye.